So in the last video, I showed these uh, how to create something like a recursive algorithm, but where it's kind of distributed over multiple methods and it gets kind of convoluted how it's actually working. In this video, I'm just going to show how to create these cool uh, trees here, not because it's different from any of the other things that I did. And I can show you here if I go to my world, I have a lot of uh, variables here. So don't get too uh, don't don't be too daunted by all of these different these things just because I think it's cool to change the the tree here. So let's go down here. All of this is just for creating these sliders that I that I created. And then I have an update method. So we go here. So I created a method called draw line. Uh, at angle. So it's called dr draw line L angle. So, but I think I meant to draw line at angle. So I can draw a line from any point X and Y and some length angle and then some length. And then I have this stop it, which is actually my stop parameter as we've seen in the other videos. So what I really do is I do draw the line first. I draw actually two I create this x2 and y2 and I then draw the line. So the first time this runs it just draws a single line uh, from from one coordinate to another uh, coordinate. And we can see here what it, what it does. It just sets a color and draws the line. Then I'm checking if as long as uh, if stop it is larger than zero, then I I do what is in here. So then I check, I get some random value here. I do some randomness to make the tree unique in some ways and uh, other stuff. But the interesting thing is I'm calling the method here recursively. So I draw one line, like this is the first line, and then I call the same method two times to draw the two other lines. And then I change the angle here uh, I put the angle between and divide it by two. So this way I can say, for example, there should be a 45 degree angle between these two branches. So this is how I calculate that. And I divide by some length factor. And then I have my stop it here, which is uh, uh, what is going to be the next one. In the other example, I used stop it minus one. But here I sit, I subtract one to stop it before I send it uh, further along. You can do any way you like like that. So what this code does is that when I'm starting up the program, I'm calling, let's see here, I have this draw method where I clear the screen and then I draw the line at an angle. So this is just to get it started. So we can see here, draw it, I say start angle and iterations. And if we look at the original value for a start angle, we can say that the start angle is 90 degrees. And the, let's see here, and the iterations is how many branches it should draw. And that is set to, let's see here, 10. So it will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then one more because it says larger than 0, so it hits 0. So really, I should have uh, maybe stopped it one before that, but no one, maybe, no one really cares about that, I think. So when this program is running, we can actually slide different things here. I can put parameters here. Um, I have uh, different sliders. So I think the first one is the length factor. So that will determine how long is the first line here. And that will then, or oh, sorry, not how long the first line, but it will define how long the lines will be, uh, how much the lines will be shorted uh, in percentage um, when I do this. So if I start, and it also, all of the others will then go into effect. This is why it collapses. But if you can see the lines here, if I move this upwards, it gets a lot shorter. And if I move it this way, it gets longer. 
So let's just keep it like that. The next thing is the angle, and this is why it collapses, because it collapses back to almost zero angle. And now I can kind of twist it, and you see the longer I get over here, the more angle I get between the lines here. And I can go into something that will go almost negative like this. So it, it can be really cool. So now we have something that looks a bit like what we had in the beginning. So that was the angle. Then we have iterations. So the iterations means the cool thing is if we put more iterations, this will kind of blacken in the end and, and look more like a tree. So if we go up in iterations, we can get something like this, which looks pretty cool. I'll take it a bit down again just to make sure it's fast enough. Greenfoot isn't the fastest to do this. And then I have something I call the asymmetry low and asymmetry high. So that means that it will change, it will add some angle to this branch, or it will add some angle to this branch. So if I take the high one, you can see that the top branch will move this way, and we can create something like this. Let me... This looks like something from nature, maybe some of the images I, ha I had in my introduction to this subject here. So we can do something and it can become some really new structures that looks like something we could see in nature. We can also go the other way. This is just asymmetry in the other direction. And if we go both ways, we kind of go against it. So either you go one way or the other, because if I put them at the same place, it's kind of the same as just adjusting the angle. So. And then the last one is randomness. So this is um, because it can be pretty cool. I just add some, some bit of randomness into the angle of the branches. This way, the more randomness, the more weird it's going to look. So when I go here, you can see now th there's some randomness into these branches. It's not a huge randomness, but it is there. I put some more branches into it and I can then if I go like this, I can create all kinds of random leaf-like structures here. So there's a lot of uh, cool stuff you can do with this. And it's very easy to do something like this with recursion because the illustration or this kind of animation thing is really recursive in nature, uh, like in its nature. I also put a button here to do some animation. When I click that, it, do, it does like this. So we're going, it's just going through all of the angles and moving everything at the same time. So it will kind of collapse into this weird looking thing here. So I think that's also pretty cool to see it over time. And it does take a lot of CPU power to do this in Greenfoot, but it looks pretty cool, right? I don't know if it can do it any faster. Yeah. So this is an example where we are really using the uh, recursive nature of this to create something like this. I think there should be a small word of warning though. And that is that although recursive uh, methods are can be very elegant and look very elegant. Sometimes they don't perform as well as iterative approaches. So don't be fooled by the elegant nature of this. Sometimes they will actually perform worse. And I think the biggest problem is that when we write code, we want to write code that's very easy to understand for other programmers. And oftentimes recursion is something that people struggle with understanding. It's pretty hard. It's not hard to see that this is recursion because we can see here it calls itself. But the idea behind it, if you saw this code, imagine you saw this code like for the first time and you hadn't seen this illustration over here, would you be able to say what it would look like? Would you have any idea that this would draw something that looks like a, a tree? Even though I didn't put all of this uh, asymmetry and all of this stuff in between if it, it, if it was just numbers. I think it would be very, very hard to read. 
and in many cases if you can do an iterative version instead it's often easier to read because it's just easier to see what's going on so there's that's just my uh, last word on recursion and good luck with um, trying to implement something yourself I'll put all of this on my github page so that it's easier for people to try and uh, try it out and uh, do some changes and maybe if you want to play around with this uh, tree creator that I did here or maybe the dunghill and the flies I don't know <laughs> your choice so that's it bye